Hey guys, and welcome to a battle between myself in charge of the mighty Ancestrous Dowie up against the Giga Perk and his Bretonian forces. So we're certainly been trying to make the uh, Ancestors proud in this one. Certainly going to be uh, a little bit tough, however. We are going to be trying out a few different new units that I don't often pick in this matchup. So I thought I'd give them a go and see how they do work. So for the front line though, we've gone pretty damn basic. We have Dwarf Warriors who are chevroned up just to help them hold a little while longer. In a second line of Miners with Blast and Charges. Now if you're familiar with the channel at all, you do know that I love Miners with Blast and Charges in a secondary line just to ensure they can get both of their Blast and Charges off. And that absolutely wrecks Bretonian infantry incredibly efficiently. So we should be able to hold up the enemy for a reasonable amount of time. In the back lines, we do have triple slayers, including the dragon back slayers. So three of those bad boys to help pull down cavalry. So we have invested a lot in the artillery pieces. So we do have double cannon, which they very often uh, you know, often sort pick in this matchup by myself and many other Dowie players. Going to take him down Cav and so forth and counter shoot and trebuchets. However, we've gone for an organ gun, a unit that I absolutely love um, thematically, but I don't get to use it too often. But I was thinking maybe it's going to be pretty decent up against Cav and maybe even peasant archers as well, shredding them very quickly. And up in the sky, the other unit we don't bring terribly often is going to be the Gyro Bomber. Now, he's gone through several changes in recent patches and the like, and he should be relatively decent coming in with his improved bomb bombing run it can be do some you know good damage overall but i'm really looking forward to seeing his armor piercing missile gun it can certainly tear apart models so i'm thinking it's going to be okay up against cavalry it also reduces their speed by 36 percent with its new suppressed uh, mechanic so it should be some good fun overall for our leadership core, we've gone pretty simple. Gone Brindle the White Dwarf, fantastic in this matchup because of his flash bomb, of course, slowing down the enemy, as well as a rune smith. Bring the usual kits I like to bring with him rune of wrath and rune to slow down the enemy. Rune of negation is just so goddamn powerful, as well as the hammer of Karak Draws. So, pretty fun, tight build overall over here. So, let's go look at my opponent's Bretonian build, and he's on far wider, which is the way to play this. He wants to try and wrap around as much as possible, but he's going to be trying to do some counter artillery fire with double field trebuchet. Now, this is a uh, risky gambit. It can certainly pay off. If the Dowie haven't gone long range of cannons and the like, then uh, you're going to be able to force them towards you and do huge damage. But unfortunately here, I do have the cannons. And I think most of the time, a trebuchet gambit doesn't pay off in this matchup. In the front lines, he does have men-at-arms just to get in there, do some damage and some nice harass. And the secondary line is where he has much more of a punch with foot squires, the glorious peasant mobs, of course, but more foot squires kind of into the sunset. These guys are armor-piercing anti-infantry, perfect for going up against the mighty Dowie forces. He does have a ton of peasant bowmen as well, to be as to be expected. Four units of these bad boys backed up by a couple of units of peasants as well. Not sure why he has them in the back line. I'd much rather see them in the front line, but I suppose it's to uh, stop any harass coming on, on his bow. Roman. For Hero Core, he does have Felix, who I really like in this matchup, actually. Pretty damn cool guy all round. He does decent armor piercing abilities overall. Can certainly give a helping hand to other heroes as well. I'd quite like to see him mixed in with a Paladin here. It looks like Fey Enchantress is taken to the field as well. Shield of Thorns, Earth Blood, Regrowth, all that good stuff. She does ride her two-legged over one side of her unicorn. Going to be certainly interesting to see if she can do the work. Of course, she does do magic damage, so, but she's not you know, the biggest damage dealer in general. She's really here to keep these other units fighting. And it looks like he has double Question Knights over on the left-hand flank. Anti-infantry. Going to be certainly trying to give my Dowie forces the business. So, as you can see, Trebuchet is coming in. Did some okay damage straight out of the gate onto the Dwarf Warriors. And we are returning fire with our cannons now, catching some of these poor peasant bowmen in the mix as well. Over on this flank here, the Jai Bomber has started to push up. And you can see, with one volley, he does in fact kill a couple of knights on this side. Just up to the two kills. But every single volley he does do in, it seems to be killing a couple of knights. Which is really good value overall, considering these guys are pretty damn expensive. The Jai Bomber, not the cheapest unit in itself. However, it still comes in with those bombing runs, which I'm going to be using later in the game. So just doing some nice damage overall to Quest Knights. Already taking down five on one unit and three on the other. Leaving a trail of dead horsemen and slowing these guys down as well as they do start to advance here. Now the Pretendian player, realising, you know, the Trebuchet Gambit's not going to pay off a huge amount here. Does uh, abandon these guys in the back lines. Just going to continue to fire and I want to focus them down as much as possible with my cannons. I am making a bit of a mistake here. I should be focusing... Focus firing one of the units rather than one cannon on either one, but still, it's going to be a good trade for me. 
Now, the Dwarf Warriors are taking a bit of damage from this trebuchet fire, but are ready to match these uh, men at arms in close combat. They are taking a little bit of fire here from the peasant bowmen, but nothing too crazy. As for the Orn Gun, I've actually tried to focus down Felix with him, tried to see if I can catch him with a couple of those cannonballs, but it's not really paying off, unfortunately. As you can see, he's pretty hard target, and they're not most, the most accurate of fellows, so I'm going to be switching our targets relatively soon. The Quest Knights do come up for a lovely charge on the right-hand side, trying to pepper down the miners, but we're going to be counter-charging with the Dragon back slayers and that consistent damage coming in from the gyro bomber has got some fantastic work and you can see the orn gun as well starting to make these guys pay the toll for pushing forward now it's a little bit sketchy in the front lines i'm actually keeping grom brindle and the runesmith back um, to protect the back line. It's got so much money invested here and the Dwarf Slayer. So I'm allowing myself to lose the front line, but incredibly slowly while I kind of try and win the War of Attrition. Now you can see the Orn Gun here has switched to the Peasant Bowman and he can break them in one volley. And this is certainly what I should have been doing from the start of the battle. You can see him tearing apart these guys with fantastic efficiency. Men at arms have been pushed back here. Looks like a shield of thorns has gone down. It's getting a little danger closer. Looks like the Quest Knights are managed to push through the front line. So we whack them with a flash bomb with Bron Brindle. And we're going to be able to drag these guys down really, really quite easily here. Another unit of Quest Knights, though, is going to be pushing through this centre pocket. Trying to get back here on top of the cannons. But we do have double slayers here. Going to be uh, cutting them off from each side. Trying to hunt these guys down. And even if they do engage with one of my cannon crews, they're going to get pulled down so quickly. That I'm quite happy to kind of stand here and fight this, to be honest, for the most part. Orn Gun has switched to her second unit of Peasant Bowmen. And look, one more volley. And those guys are so close to breaking already. So it looks like we are doing pretty good here. Balance power slightly in our favour as we do drag down these knights. Another rune of Wrath and Rune has been popped on these bad boys. There's a pocket of strength here coming in for the Bretonians. Some healing going down as well. Miners with blast charges are simply going to push forward to put pressure on the peasant bowmen. While slayers do start to fall back. Now I see a good opportunity here for a bombing run. He does have Felix, Foot Squires and um, his Lord here. So he's coming through, dropping those bombs and some really nice damage on top of those Foot Squires. So I decide in the end, I'm actually going to charge in here with the Dragonback Slayers. Get that nice rear charge and try and break up this formation a little bit. Drag bomb up to 34 kills. Certainly not doing it terribly by any means considering most of those have been on uh, cavalry. Both cannons are once again firing. We were focusing down the trebuchets still, but it looks like they have actually lost all of their artillery pieces at this point. And the Orn Gun, once again, just going to be clicking and uh, deleting some peasant bowmen. You can see these guys getting torn apart here by those vicious Dowie up on the high ground. Getting some pretty decent kills overall. Let's have a look. Up to 102, which is very impressive considering I was kind of wasting them at the start of the battle. So the Jibomer has turned around. They're going to be focused firing down at uh, Felix, I believe, here. Von Brindle is going to be pushing forward as well. I see Felix is a little bit isolated on his own. Ten charges isn't the greatest for me. They can bat him. So we're going to be coming in with the Runesmith, dropping Rune of Negation as well as the Hammer and Rune of Wrath and Rune down on Felix. So there's no chance of him escaping. And the White Dwarf cuts him up in a matter of seconds. With that, my, my opponent does decide, you know what, it's best time to bow out. And at this point, I think it was over. Felix was gone. The Thane Chargers can't do too much, unfortunately. And the rest of his forces were starting to rout off the field. So very well played to my opponent, though. Giga Perk there, coming in with the Bretonian. A pretty cool and uh, awesome matchup. So overall, I think the Organ Gun was uh, pretty MVP up there with the Gyrocopter. Now, the cannons did decent work, did focus down some cav, but mainly their job was just to get rid of those trebuchets. And the Organ Gun... Wasted him on Felix at the start. Got a few kills on Cav, but then I turned it on those peasant bowmen. Now, it does lack range, so you've got to be a little bit careful with it. But if you can get on those guys, it deletes them so goddamn quickly. And is a really awesome utility for the dwarfs. In this matchup, I think it's certainly viable. As well as the Gyro Bomber. So, Gyro Bomber did get a lot of buffs recently, if it's slow and so forth. And it did get a big improvement to his bombs, I think, in the uh, patch before the last patch. And in this matchup, once again, if your opponent hasn't gone for an air build, 34 kills may not seem like a crazy amount, but these guys did chevron up, and they got one of those units of cav down to about a third health before the battle even really got going. So it certainly did some good work overall. Anyway, guys, hope you did enjoy this victory for the White Dwarf. If you did, please do consider subscribing and liking the video. If you want to see replays up on the channel, now is the perfect time. I'm actually going to be going... Um, visiting some family back home next week so I'm going to be 
going double as hard on replays this week so I can upload them and ensure that they um, kind of get made you know, view to the public next week even though I won't be here at my computer. So feel free to send me replays. Please do, do do it via my Discord. Link can be found just in the description down below. A few people have been sending them to me via email but unfortunately they're going to get lost in my junk folder and all that kind of stuff. So please, if you are going to send replays, do it via my Discord. Anyway guys, until next time, peace, peace, and as always, stay awesome.